Yeah. So I try and keep myself every day on a neutral. And some days my energy is not great. But even when my energy is not great, I will still try and keep myself as at neutral as I possibly can. Yeah. Because from neutral, I can act accordingly to what needs to be. And your best sense? techniques for that are? Get to know myself. Welcome to the Prime Life Project Podcast. A place to help you unlock your full potential, both mentally and physically, to become the best version of you. Welcome back to the episode of the Prime Life Project Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel James, and today I've got Mr. Mikey Markham back in the hot seat. How are we? Oh, mate, it feels good to be back. It really is a hot seat, but I'm buzzing. And so the office is all right today. Tem- Temperature-wise, we're okay. Oh, we're good, we're good. We weren't so good last week, though, were we, mate? Well, no, Coughing you were ill. Yeah, Mark, so Mikey tried to rock up to our last podcast, ill. And then last week, we didn't record a, co- a podcast because Mikey had got me and Katie both ill, um, so we banned him from the house. I felt like... <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I did you a favour. You got through the sickness now and that's it for the year. You've had it, you're out, you're good. And then we had this conversation off air, the fact that that would work for normal people. But when you go into a school regularly, like we both do, uh, and you've got a kid in the household that just brings back germs. The little will, petri I'm sure dishes, I'll carry man. on. Yeah, I'm sure I'll carry on getting it. And whatever <laughs> else, new variant comes out of the cold and flu. So, Well, I did, didn't I? I was I had that uh, cold and flu and then straight after it, I had this stomach bug that's yeah. been disgusting. So. I've not had that, so, uh, <laughs> Hopefully I bypass it, it goes in nicely with the segue of what we're up to today, yeah. though, because we're going to just talk about how we've been and maybe things that we've faced and how we've overcome them. So, I think it's good time as well, because <laughs> by the time this goes out, it'll be the start of February. So, like, do you mean like a little check in of how the year's gone? So, yeah, what we got. So, again, once again, for those that don't know the, the format of this podcast, me and Mikey have been doing this for a long time. Mikey's my co host for a while. And then essentially, we just go off on tangents. So, Katie, behind the scenes, writes us questions, uh, which I've not read. Mikey's just got them when he's picked up there and then we basically have a back and forth open conversation about them to keep us on some form of track rather than going off on crazy tangents so if you're new here that's what we're all about i, I like them crazy tangents let's go back yeah, let's, let's, let, let, you know, let's throw the ipad away let's have a chat let's go crazy <laughs> but it's a, it's a chat about life and it's nice because the podcast we did together for new year's eve all came out around new year's didn't it and we've had that month now so on reflection, how has this month developed for you and unveloped? <laughs> uh, it's been crazy. Like I said to you beforehand, so again, listeners, you'll, you'll hear more about this close to the time of launch, but I've worked on this coaching program and it's six modules and we've put the final touches on the, the manual that goes along with that. I haven't finished it off yet. It's 171 pages. Mm-hmm. So that's 171 that's, pages of, yeah. of content, content Intense. gold, I'll call it. And it's yeah, it, it, like, it's been busy, it's been chaotic and it's the calm before the storm because I've now got a lot of stuff that's developed through the Ascend program that's coming to fruition in February now. And then on top of that, a lot of schools. So from February onwards, it's kind of all, it's kind of been the calm before the storm. When I was talking to my barber about this last time I saw him about, do you know when you're on the uh, ride Oblivion, the roller coaster? When it, so for those of you who haven't been to Tom Towers, the Oblivion, basically imagine you're going up this big roller coaster loop and then just when you get to the top and it sl- starts to go down, it stops and it hangs you there so you can see the drop. And I felt that's what January has been like for me, where there's been all that the pressure build, build up build, behind. Yeah. I've just been there waiting for it to drop. And now we're getting into February. It's going to start picking up and picking pace, which I'm looking forward to and I'm, I'm ready for it. So nice metaphor. We're looking at the oblivion and it's going up and up. When you've been going up, have you had any stops? Have you had any challenges on the up where you've been had to face adversity or a bit of struggle or work on things? Yeah. So every, to, to, to put the, everything together to the standards that I want it at, and Kate's been working behind the scenes doing it with me as well, it's been a, a struggle. And on top of that, it's managing all the other things. So again, I've still got some some other clients that I'm working with as well, like the, the fitness-based stuff. Uh, so again, still got that going on. Uh, I've still got the schools I'm going into, the radio, there's the podcast, everything's still been going on. But it's making sure I'm doing everything to the best of my ability. And then when you're going to be launching a product that is in my eyes, exceptional. Mm-hmm. And again, it's just my eyes because people's babies. Subjective, I mean, yeah. you know I mean? And <laughs> again, all the, the clients I'm working through with at the minute, the results have been fantastic like and amazing. You then get started to get a bit of imposter syndrome, which is interesting because we did a podcast that was really popular with Katie. So again, I'll link that in the bio um, so you can see that. But that's then something I've then had to really sit with because I'm going to then be putting something out there which is essentially my baby it's like you with music, I imagine. Like to imagine you've spent six months to a year crafting this album mm-hmm. and then you put it out there and you're really proud of it. And then you'd be like, 
imposter syndrome like who am i like what are people going to say and all this sort of stuff when really the core essence of it uh, i'm really proud of it it's coming absolutely incredible but there's been those little few little niggling doubts but the way that i as i mentioned on that podcast the way that i deal with it is i just keep taking steps forward each day has that seeped into personal and family life like that as well have you faced struggle in that dynamic um more me being tired very tired yeah i'm very focused and mm, hyper focused yeah that that potentially mm. is the issue uh, and Kate had a conversation with me about this the other day where essentially, n- not in these words, but paraphrasing, sometimes I can be so hyper-focused on stuff that sometimes I kind of, I'm not necessarily that present. Uh, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't the wording, but essentially it's like I'm, I'm Do you just feel so, that to be true? Uh, not necessarily. Yes yes and no. Like I know I'm very well aware, but she also knew what she was getting into. I know she sat there. <laughs> so she knew what she was getting into. So I didn't apologize for it because she knew when we first got together, when we were friends beforehand, she knew what I was like. And I told her very clearly, this is where I'm going. So now it's almost a case of like, I'm now doing what I'm saying. Does that make sense? Yeah. But for me, this is how I am. Like, and I said this to a couple of months ago, maybe six, seven months ago, is that she's never seen me in my state when I'm actually really going at it. Mm-hmm. Because the entire time she's known me, even when we've been friends, there was, I, I just wasn't clicking. It was, it was very, very clunky. And I didn't really have that path in that direction. Mm-hmm. But I've known from when I built the Prime Life Project, there are areas in my life when I am hyper-focused, I'm a different person. And now for the first time in probably about two years, that hyper-focus has come back and she's now kind of start, starting to see it. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm not the easiest person to be with anyway. I've kind of mentioned it on the episode where I spoke about my, my story. I'm very well aware of that. I'm very, very well aware. Mm-hmm. However, I make no apologies for it because it's, I, I've spent so long. You know who you are. And I've spent 29 years or 28 years living a certain way. Now it's like, right, this is where I'm going. I think I've had a good conversation. It's all sorted. But that, that for me is one of the, the downsides of it is that when I've got this intensity about me, that I, I'm very well aware, even at the best of times, I can be quite an intense person to be around. Mm-hmm. But then you throw on top of it the pressure that I put myself under, it can then be even more, if that makes sense. So your way of handling that is communication, which we always talk about. Yeah. You've had to have a bit of an honest chat together and a bit of an authentic moment. Absolutely, and that's when we spoke about that on the episode, that's something that we always do. Mm-hmm. So for me, because I am how I am, it's not really an issue for me. Like my emotions, my, my, my mood, I'm very, I am what I am. Mm-hmm back into getting a bit more hyper-focused. But I then notice that when I get tired, which I do when I'm hyper-focused, that I can then be a bit quieter. Yeah. But then it's then that communication of Katie being like, I'm noticing this, is everything okay? And then it's like the reassurance that it is. What about when Mikey Markham come over and made you ill and knocked you maybe off course in any which way? What did you do in that situation? Were you pretty ill? How ill were you? Oh, um, I, was, I was fine. So it okay. was a lot worse than me. <laughs> I, I, I just had like, the snuffles and stuff. But this thing for me, so I've noticed when it comes to anything with me, that it's when I don't feel uh, mentally sharp. Yeah. That's what bothers me. I can handle having a runny nose. I can handle having a sore throat. But when I mentally don't feel sharp, that's what knocks me. Mm-hmm. Because with what I do, and I've done, again, people that follow me on Instagram, hopefully you have the Prime Life Project on Instagram, mm-hmm. um, people have noticed that I've started to post a lot more content during the mornings Mm -hmm. so every morning now without fail i've been doing studying so i I study every single morning and i then sit there and kind of used to call them my morning coffee thoughts i just post it out there now and i have some deep reflections on stuff and when i'm not even able to think it bothers me Mm -hmm. because for whatever reason i associate it with i'm losing whatever it is that i've got even though it's this can sound a bit bizarre even though i know that what i've got isn't even mine because yeah, my, my, my belief is again I'm downloading this stuff from Universal Energy ether. Source the ether yeah. so it's not mine anyway I'm borrowing it it's like a pool thing. 100% like someone else had this information before me like, no ideas are new do you mean it's, it's, they are just kind of what they are like recycled stuff I love that belief I like that yeah because yeah, so, nice, yeah. for me it's like if you start to come when moments told... of magic come to you it's not like having your ego attached to it it's just like I've found, I've accessed that and yeah. I'm going to try and utilise it in some aspect there's a guy that I'm studying yeah. again he's, he's very like uh, Christian based and I, again, I'm not religious. I love there's a lot of stuff from the Bible where taking stories, and I think it's a fantastic book of how we're meant to be in life and stories. I love the stories in there. And again, same with the Quran and all the other stuff like Bhagavad Gita. I think it's some fantastic stories that are metaphors for life. And he talks about when he's doing what he's doing, he reminds himself that it's not him. In his head, it's God. Like God's message coming yeah, through him. Yeah. And he's, again, not only he's talking about Bible stuff, but like all the stuff he's got in his life, because he's a multimillionaire, he's just like, this isn't me, it's God working through me. And in my head, it's like- You're like yeah. an antenna to it. Exactly. And that's the thing for me where it's like, that's what how I see it when I'm doing yeah. stuff. I'm reminding myself it's not me, it's the it's universal energy, whatever it is. And I'm just getting myself to the frequency. Well, you'd be doing it a disservice if you don't tune into it. Yeah, because then it makes it about it. me. And it's I love then that. the egotistical, but for me, it's like, no, no, I'm only doing something that same that right frequency. Yeah, so then if I then beautiful. lose it, it's because of me not being on the right frequency. So you've got to tap into it. Which again, that, that, that for me is how I've always likened it. 
because like I said for me the the idea of a god like, I'd love to actually speak to someone about that and have a conversation because I'm not against the idea but for me I believe that it's just all the same thing people just put a person to it there's universal energy people can't really get their head around it so they make misinterpret it convolute it yeah so then they make it like a person because it's easier to visualize a person than it is to this energy that's all around us so that's my belief and that, that's something that served me really well and the people I follow the success people I follow they all kind of have the same similar belief and a lot of them are religious but I just take whatever religious stuff they're talking about and relate it through my system my framework because I spoke to, spoke to Owen so when I first read that variety trans surfing book I didn't have a framework to put it through and I think that's where people struggle a lot they'll hear stuff in self-help books and they'll hear this information but they don't have a framework to process it so they don't really understand it on a deeper level they, from, from a conscious they, oh yeah I get what that's saying but they've not got a framework to apply it to their life yeah. Whereas now I've got a framework, I can take whatever I'm hearing and be like, okay, where does this fit into my framework? And I can see how it links and works. Does so, that make sense? Yeah, so you, you were saying you've got this information, this pool, this antenna that you're accessing, but then... Life is like I'm mad. <laughs> no, I know, it's a beautiful thing. I, I, I love the metaphor of that. But you're very channeled, you're tunnel visioned on what you're doing and achieving. But like I say, things like that we can't fight away illness and so on have hit you it's not knocked you too off course though no it's just frustration you, I, I, I always worry that I'm going to lose how do I've got. you get through that then do you just have like your lists and stuff that you know you've got your non-negotiables and you can stick to because I suppose when we've got full energy and we're thriving you feel this sense of oh I could maybe do a little extra I could do a bit more a bit more but say when you're low energy and lacking do you just make sure you'll get your things that you know you need to get done? Yeah, done. they're not essentials. And, yeah. that, and that's where something I, I've learned throughout business, whatever it is, yeah. just get your stuff done. Now, again, it's very different if I was bed bound. If I was bed bound, I'd give myself some grace and be like, I'm ill. I can't do anything. So I, I wasn't that ill. I just had a, a bit, a slight cold. I just didn't feel 100%, but my body felt better than my mind did. So my mind was really struggling. And obviously with what I do, it's a lot of working with my mind and a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. So I was then giving myself a bit of grace that I couldn't, do the stuff that I wanted to do to the extent I wanted to, but I still did something. So for example, when I was studying, I went more to YouTube to watch some stuff and I didn't take any notes. I'll just watch it. Mm -hmm. So like, at least I'm taking something in rather than normally I take notes, I'd be questioning some stuff. Yeah. I'd be pausing it thinking, whereas that I just wasn't, I was letting it run. Yeah. So I was still doing stuff because I was able to, but if I had been bed bound and ill and not been able to do something, I'd have been kind to myself and been like, I need to rest. My body's telling me. Something. I like the word there as well. Kindness to yourself. Hundred percent. Because we we, we just put too much pressure on ourselves. We've got to do more. It's like we're cool. We can miss one day because you're ill. Yeah. Do you have that with people that you're working with, especially mentally, that are constantly just beating themselves up, and then they go on this decline, massive, rapid decline because of it? Yeah, because they normally there's a story attached to it. Yeah. So, I whatever it is, like they're they're in bed and they're lazy. And then they've attached this massive story about, they, they make an identity thing about it. They make up this whole story about how they're a loser, they're no good. And because I'm not working today, this then means that no one's going to want to work with me in the future. Or I'm going to lose my house. And they create this whole massive story that makes them feel worse than the actual facts. Mm. And the facts are they're ill. They can't work. They need to rest. Yeah. Everything else around that is just a made-up narrative and story. But then it then comes down to that, that perfectionism that people that they feel they've got to constantly be performing. And it normally comes down to the validation. They're wanting the validation either from people around them or whatever it is that they're going through. And again, it can be quite hard to navigate, I think, for people sometimes. So it's just, again, coming out of a place of love and compassion. Yeah. Like your body's telling you something. And acceptance. Acceptance. If you're ill, you're ill. Yeah. And especially like when it comes to going into the office or something. Like people don't want you to be ill. Hint, hint, Mikey. So again, maybe, nah. you, just don't, maybe you just don't go in that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. You just give yourself that break of like, I know I need the money and I know that I can't have any more sick days, but I'm ill. And then she's been like, I don't want to make other people ill. So then you just, like, just, just rewire it. It's like, you just need to rest. Your body's telling you something, just rest, recover, do what you can do. Ping out some emails if you need to, but just do something. Even if it's again, when you're watching stuff like Netflix, can you maybe watch something slightly educational rather than just your normal junk? Because if you're there for two days, do you mean just, just if it's really bothering you that much, can you choose something that makes you feel a little bit better? It doesn't mean you have to spend the whole time trying to gain some knowledge, but just one little thing. Stepping like, forward. Yeah, just something what? where you just feel like, do you know what? I'm not just sat here vegetating. If you're wired that way, because I know that I am. Yeah. I think for myself, on reflection, I had a, an, um, probably the best start to a year I ever had. Like in two or three weeks, we'd really scheduled everything in. 
uh, me and Chrissy were so aligning on everything. We had perfect family days and even things that we were lacking because it was so scheduled, we could look back at it and go, this has been a great week, but I know that I need a little bit more me time or I need a bit more creativity in my life or whatever it is. And we were firing from all cylinders and adding those in accordingly. But then like, you know, that illness came on and I was getting the essentials done and just making sure I met what I needed to do. So I still felt good. But then the norovirus that I had, I've, I've never been that ill. It's took all our family and I had two bed bound days. And then the bounce back from that's been really difficult. We just had a few days of, oh, we're not quite having good conversation we're not communicating well enough of what our needs are we're not back on the scheduling in terms of work wise i went and did a few sessions on the farm and we had things out of my control happen of naughty boys and things that i spoke to you about before but it was just a little bit of a whirlwind and be, maybe because the polarity of such a great start to then this nonsense and, and horrible part it's i'm feeling I'm through the storm now. I genuinely feel, come on, reflect back to how good this has been. But it really did sort of shift me off course a bit. But I also think with this as well, when you've had something so good, so then when you said afterwards, you kind of found it hard to get going again. Yeah. I would then hypothesize, were you struggling to get going again or did you go back to your old normal? I, th I think what found easiest, yeah. yeah so, 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 the, the old, so you started so some, January so well, yeah. So that that was like that wasn't quite the new normal yet. You were like, let, let's just say a football team. You were like Aston Villa that was overperforming. Yeah, yeah, so you, yeah. you were technically overperforming, yeah. but again, everything was flying. And then you get some setbacks, yeah. and then so you go back to the easiest thing. But that's then that's then your old base, not yeah, yeah. base. And then that's where people can get a bit stuck because they're like, oh, we're not back to where we were. But it's like you hadn't quite cemented that in yet. And then it's just having that word and being like, right. Well, what's then missing? Like, but again, when you come back from illness as well, like you're not quite as sharp, especially when it's something like that that's really knocked you for six. It's then really just having that time to just be like, right, where's my head at? What do I need? Maybe giving yourself an extra week to just ease back into it again. Like when you come back from an injury, just ease yourself back into it again before you're like, right, yeah. at the start of the year, we were doing this and it worked fantastically. Yeah. Let's get back to this again. Take to all go those from, great parts away exactly, and look at what we can improve. To go from being ill to then struggling and straight back to that. And pick yourself up because I, I noticed it a lot quicker. Whereas before... I would have sort of gone on this steady decline, working its way towards depression of, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm just useless, this is my narrative and story. But really quickly, I said, no, Chrissy, we need to check in. I know we've got kids to do, sort today, but we need to get somebody to care and look after them because we need a conversation. Yeah. And we went and took that, whereas before we'd go into pilot mode and just do what we know. So I agree, I think... Especially when you've got like lots of stuff that's going on with the business as well that you've got going on behind the scenes. Like yeah. You need to have this conversation. It's not just for the relationship, it's for the business. Yeah. Especially when you guys have got the business together. And, and like reevaluate and recalibrate everything. Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, I, I think that's what I'd congratulate us on, if anything. It was just the ability to recognise it, have that moment for self to check in and get back on a path together. Yeah. So yeah, that that's something of a big lesson recently is just taking the time and going okay let's not let it allow it to get too far down the path here and let's have that communication because i think normally like what one person's feeling in a relationship the other one's feeling as well yeah. but it's like yeah. but, 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 but they don't want to have a conversation that's it goes back to me it's that's, that's that communication it's like oh are you feeling a bit off yeah me too what's what's and that? and that uh, self-awareness to yeah. be able to check in because i think even before i wouldn't have checked in i, w I would have just been annoyed yeah and then let it fester and be a nuisance yeah. and then walk down the path yeah. and then it erupts. Whereas this time it was like, no, I've been ill. I'm going to forgive that, but I'm not allowing this to be continued. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's good, good when it, that's, and that's one of the biggest things that I've had to, to try and work on over the last couple of years is the self-awareness of where my head's at with stuff. Yeah. And that's the phrase I always use, where's my head at? Oh, and a lot of times it's real simple. It's a real, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. But for me, it's then always, it's quite a simple fix for me. I'm not that complex. I'm quite an easy, it's a really easy fix. Yeah. It's not an easy fix when I let it ride out. Yeah. So for me, I just sit with something maybe for an hour and I'll just be in my own head. Like I'm in my own head quite a bit, like thinking about stuff. And I'll just sit and process it and I'm like, okay, yeah. And I kind of just work it out. Um, and that's sometimes where kids come in and I'll be in the middle of doing that. And I'm not the easiest person when I'm inside my own head thinking like that because yeah. I get distracted, like, oh, I'm trying to figure this out. But once I, it's very hard. It's, sorry, it's very few and far between now where I let that ride for a while. Just literally give me an hour and I'll sit and process, but like, right, where's my head at? Yeah. And I can just kind of unpick it. It's like, okay, cool. 
You can be, have, yeah. be honest with yourself. Because most times nothing, it's nothing big. It's so minor. I just don't let it become something big. So on a really honest, authentic level, on where, where, where's your head been at? Is it, Are you on a really good emotional plane? Or have you had any dips? I, mate, I'm always the same pretty much. You and keep I, it consistent. I, and like I said, I think Kate will attest to this. Like, and the things she's done that podcast. I'm very much, much of a muchness. Yeah. The only time I'm ever knocked off is normally when I'm getting inside my own head. Yeah. Like when I'm making something big. And that like, then you classes like the ego then. Yeah. Because you're battling with this voice that... 100% percent i making up stories that yeah. have happened against my own head about stuff. But that um, you've not had a, as much of that. No, because when I'm, especially when I've got focus. Yeah. It's so interesting. It's, it's really interesting you said this as well because when was it yesterday morning while I was studying, just for, because again, I sit on these, uh, sit on YouTube, I've got these like things, the seats behind. So I sit on this one next to me to read. So I don't sit in this seat, I sit on that seat and I just sort of sit and reflect. And before I started yesterday, I sat and I realized my biggest issue is when I have too much time to think. Mm. And that's what I think most people's issues is. They've got too much time to think. Whereas actually when I am doing the course, when I'm talking, whatever I'm doing, and I've got a load of stuff to do, mm. I don't have time to think. My biggest problem is when I've got too much time to think. Yeah. It's almost like my brain creates a problem. And sometimes it's good because obviously there's a problem there for a reason and I get to actually figure out, well, where's this come from and kind of self-assess. But for most of the time, I'm just very neutral. Like I don't, because it's, lots of, it's not necessarily stoicism, but the stoics talk about it a lot. I try to remove emotions out of it a lot. Now, sometimes I can get caught up. I'm, like, I'm not mean to it. And again, especially if, if Kate's talking about a subject that's really like riled me up. Not that she, not her, but she's talking to me about a subject that's riled me up. Like I can get really emotional, but for the most part, I try and keep my emotions in check yeah. because I have been that guy that's always angry. It doesn't serve me. And then I've also been the guy that's been depressed. It doesn't serve me. So I try and keep myself every day on a neutral. And some days my energy is not great, but even when my energy is not great, I will still try and keep myself as at neutral as I possibly can. Yeah. Because from neutral, I can act accordingly to what needs to be. And the best sense? techniques for that are? get to know myself <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't even ask you that but I, I can't really I can't really answer that because I've not really and the reason I can't answer is because I've not really assessed how and why I've done it because it's been such a long process yeah. but for me the biggest thing was meditation that starts me off and I notice when I'm when I'm struggling to, to figure myself out I need to meditate and again I've, I've not been as disciplined with my meditation as I should have been but I've not needed to be because yeah. before originally that's the thing that's, that got me on that good path and you just know that it's there for you if you're ever really yeah. in desperation and that, that's, that, that's the thing for me where it's like before and again I, I do love my, I genuinely it's my favourite thing to do is meditate genuinely 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 but for me it's because I get such a good high from it and it gave me that awareness originally myself but for me it's just checking in the, the, the biggest thing that I've got is a self-awareness that's helped me on this I mean is the self-awareness and to ask myself where's my head at and then have an honest conversation whether that's through journaling or just talking to myself, where is my head at? Why is this bothering me? Why is this bothering me? What what is this trying? What's this trying to teach me as well? Is a big thing, because a big thing that again I've been learning recently is again talking about the universal energy, wherever it is. I posted something on social media about it, is that everything is happening. I've talked a lot about this before. Like life happens to us, like it happens to us, and it's up to us to make it happen for us, because life can't happen for us until it happens to us, and that's the thing. Everything that's going on in my head, I'm asking myself now what's this trying to teach me mm. what, what's this telling me like why is this here what lesson is it I've got to learn and for me I can then talk about it very very logically I'm a very logical practical person yeah, yeah. I don't get too emotionally involved in it I'm like ah okay this, almost like a computer game mm. oh so this is the boss I've got to deal with now okay cool I just go to work on doing that that's I'm just very logical about it I'm very factual what are the facts I always have to ask myself what are the facts mm. because sometimes I can get caught up in making a story what are the facts? What do I actually know? And then what's made up? And it just allows me to take my emotions out of it and just sit with, right, what is this thing? Can I control it? Yes, right, well, what can I do? Yeah. Cool. Can I do, do I need to do this now? Or is that something I've got to do by the end of the week? Whatever it is. And then if I don't need to deal with it, cool, I'll let it go. But then this also can have a caveat to it because it means I then forget things. For example, before we started today, Kate told me that my car tax hasn't been done. I said I'd do it, but joking, it wasn't important to me. Mm. I forget... I, I say this all the time to Katie, I, I hate details. Don't bother me with details. I don't care about details. Like I'm very like, right, let's crack on with this. Don't talk to me about small talk, little de I don't care. Yeah. So for me, the car tax, like, oh yeah, I saw that out. And then I then got so focused on something else, that's not been important to me. Yeah. Until now, when well, I've got to get my car tonight, I don't start tax, so now I'll sort it out. Yeah. So that can be a, a counter side of it, is that I do forget little things, which is yeah. why Katie's yeah. so good at organizing my diary. Okay. Because I do mean it's like I'll say I'll do something and I get oh sidetracked to do the, the big stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Mate, that, complete that's, that's, sense. That's, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, it does make total sense. 
I, I, one thing I did want to go back to, though, because I think it's something I've fallen on that's so important to me. I didn't realise how important, but having that focus and having something to, to shoot towards and a purpose, I think it's more so when it's bigger than you as well, something that you feel you're providing and adding people in. If people don't have that in their life, that focus and that purpose, do you have any thoughts or ideas and what you'd say to people that need to find that in their life? Yeah, it's basically figuring out what you want your life to look like. And first of all, realise is that no one's coming to save you. Yeah. One of the biggest realisations that people need is that no one is coming to save you. Mm-hmm. Your life is not going to change because you listen to a podcast, because you read a book. No one's going to save you. You have to do it yourself. And that's the first realisation. Like, and that's something that I wish someone told me sooner. Yes, you can get the information from the book. I'm not saying that, but you've still got to apply it. So it's just realising that you've got to do the work. And a lot of the stuff you realise, you already know. You, and this will say, all the clients I'm working with, I'm not telling them anything. They already know the answer. I'm just asking them the questions and getting them to think differently to unlock the answers they've already got there. Does that make sense? So the first thing, if people are struggling with that, it's like you've got to realize that you've got to be intentional. So each morning, you've got two options. You can either be intentional about your day and where you're going and the kind of person you want to be, or you're going to be distracted and life is going to tell you. So life is going to tell you what kind of person you're going to be because you're going to be super reactive. You're going to be living off your emotions. You're going to be getting inside your own head. And you're going to be going off to some weird path. Whereas actually, when you start the day with a bit of intention, meaning what kind of person do I want to be today? How do I want to show up? And even just saying to yourself in the morning, I want to be a bit calmer today. You're setting that intention. And then throughout the day, you can start to check in with yourself and be like, am I, am I being calmer? And if the answer is no, well, why not? What? And then again, it's that self-realization, why not? And you start to realize why you're not being calm. And it could be because your partner's bothered you, your kid's bothered you, you're late for work, whatever it is. Oh, that's really interesting. That's what's knocked me off. Okay, well, can you do something about that? So for me, people s- struggle to, to, to create the life they want because they're not intentional about it, because they don't ask themselves the question, what is it that you want? Mm-hmm. So I always start with, what is it you want? What do you want your life to look like in five years' time? And ask yourself, what kind of person do you need to be in order to have that life? Because if you're struggling right now, you can't be the same person that you are now and have a different life. And this is where people struggle, and this is where it's scary, because people have created a comfort zone around themselves, because it's easy, it's what they know. They've got like this emotional home. So even if their life's a bit chaotic right now, and they're not happy, and it's turbulent, they're used to that chaos. So they would rather stay and sit in that chaos than step out of the comfort zone, potentially into a better life. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because that's hard. Because then it puts the pressure on them. They've actually got to do something. Whereas right now, they can control the chaos. This is why sometimes, again, you, you see it where, where people are in abusive relationships. It's hard for them to get out of it because it's like, I kind of know how to deal with this. Yeah. It's not always the case, but it's, 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 uh-huh. I, mean, I, I can deal with this. I know, I know, where, I'm at, I know I'm at, where I'm at with this. Whereas actually, when I leave here and then I'm by myself, yeah. God, I ain't got a clue how to be by myself. I don't know what I'm doing. I'll stay in this really... But then it gets to a certain point. You say Dumbledore quote. Yeah, uh, uh, what's that? Which one's that? Oh, do, 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 do what's right, not what's easy. Yeah, 100%. Do what's right, not what's easy. Then it gets to a certain point where that then will become too much. And that's when they start to make the change and they, they really get out. The pressure becomes too much. But for most of the time, if there's a real discomfort, if they can deal with the discomfort, they'd rather stay in discomfort. That, in the shoe 100%. They'll stay there until it becomes too much to bear and then they'll make a change. So for, for me, it's just asking, like, where do you want to be in five years' time? And then, right, what needs to change? What's stopping you right now? The most blatant thing, what's stopping you from becoming that person? And again, this is basically what I worked through on the the Ascend program. So it's not quite this simple, but this is a real basic overview. You have to become a different person. There's a very simple formula, B times do equals have. If you want to have something different, like have a different outcome, you have to become a different person, do different things to have that result. And that's the problem. People want to have a different outcome, yet carry on being the same person they've always been and doing the stuff they've always done but somehow get a different result. That's not how life works. So let's use fat as an example. People want to lose weight. People want to get healthy and in shape. Yeah, they still want to be a person that's lazy. Mm-hmm. They still want to be lazy. They still want to eat crap. They don't want to exercise. And somehow they want to have this different result. Mm. And that's not how this works. Or they try and do more, meaning they'll try and go to the gym. They will try and change their diet. But if they're still identifying with someone that ultimately wants to be lazy and unhealthy, that will always go back to the default setting. You can't ever outwork the self-image you have of yourself. So I've got a question that's quite loaded here, <laughs> but putting that into your life, for example, with that equation, yeah. first of all, who were you? Then who did you become uh, to have that result? But also going into the next months coming, is there anybody 
else that you've got to become, anything else you've got to add in to have a, a different result that you're not getting. So there's just two two parts to that. Like three parts. There's yeah, past, three past, past the present it's, and the future. Yeah, okay. yeah. Is there uh, a bit more that you could add and you know the process it takes to become a bit different too? Yeah, so again, look up the life. Again, if you want to check out the story, uh, I'll put the link in the bio where basically there's two hours of me sharing my story. But I look at the results I had in my life then. So again, let's just pre-frame it. I was modeling. I looked great. I uh, had a very good successful business. So I had all these things. But as a person, I was miserable. Yeah. I was deeply, deeply miserable. And I was doing things to please people. Mm-hmm. I was doing things to impress people. Because basically you've got to think, so you've got your identity and you've got something called your lie identity. And your lie identity mm-hmm. is basically all the lies that yeah. people have told you about yourself and you believe that are true. So what you then do is you then create a my identity. And your my identity is the identity that you create yeah. to try and please people that you don't want to validate and what they've told you that you are. So they said, oh, you're not smart yeah. enough. So then you create identity to prove you're smart enough, even though you don't want to prove you're smart enough, but you're doing it to prove that person wrong. Yeah. So that, but it's basically wearing the mask. Oh, yeah. So another way is wearing a mask, essentially. So I was then wearing this mask, being this person, but I was pretending. So the person I was was me walking around wearing a mask, doing things to make people happy that I didn't care about. Yeah. And then the results I had didn't really mean anything to me. I wasn't happy, I wasn't fulfilled. Yeah. So the, the have in that equation, having was nothing. Yeah which again, me being this fake version of me led to me then becoming depressed yeah. because at some point like, I just couldn't sustain this lie of a life. Mm-hmm. So then I lost everything, have, went. Yeah. And then I had to rebuild about who do I want to be. And again, that was a hard process and I still didn't know. So I was doing lots of like Tony Robbins stuff, yeah. reading books, doing courses. So then after that, even up until the age of, so that was, that was a 28 hit rock bottom. <clears throat> and then from the age of 28, I would say how old am I? 30, even to the age of about 30, so from 28 to 30, so four years, I was still trying to figure out who I actually wanted to be. So I was still making lots of mistakes yeah. because I was trying to figure it out. You, you're trying to, and it, when you're starting to realize and you get all, this is also a problem with when it comes to self-improvement, there's so much information out there, it can become overwhelming. And you think you've worked on certain parts and then you kind of realize that it's just your ego fucking you up and there's still stuff you haven't really addressed. So it's like the more you know, the more you don't know. Yeah, so yeah. there'd be a lot of stuff out there. So at the time I was giving really good advice to people, but actually my life was still a joke. And the results I was having in my life weren't great. So then again, perfect time in the universe hits me where I kind of lost the stability that I had. And any just obvious ones just to go So when left the gym. Yeah, so yeah. So when left yeah, the gym. So that was yeah. a big massive shake up for me. Again, left on my own terms, stuff that I know I needed to do because it wasn't the, the values and the morals and the environment, and the energy that was there was not helping me at all. And there's a whole backstory again that's on, on the episode of my story. The whole backstory there, it all kind of came to a front where I was just like, I need to be better. I need to be better and I need to do better to have what it is I ultimately want to have. Because the life I'm living now, this was my goal to do this in 10 years. So when I was working at that gym, I told my team of coaches, this is the life I'm going to lead. But the universe was like, oh, you want this? Right, well, I'm going to have to destroy everything for you. Because I would never be where I'm at now had I stayed at that place. Yes. Because I wouldn't have had needed to change. I could have carried on being that kind of lost guy who was kind of bumbling along, slowly making incremental steps of self-improvement and self-development, but not really getting it. And then over the last literally three years, the trajectory has been ridiculous Mm. because I've I've got a framework and I've really had to face myself Mm. and unpick some of the bullshit that was holding me back Mm -hmm. because that was the issue. And this is what I talk about a lot when it comes to the episode of paradigms. So I had a lot of habits, belief systems, self-image issues that were still crippling me. So just trying to like, people please, yeah, like yeah. Just trying to trying to people please, um, not being congruent with myself. There was a lot of stuff where I was essentially lying to myself about what it is that I wanted, because what I ultimately wanted to do was what I'm doing, what I'm doing now. Yeah. But I was still trying to because I was really successful now. So again, I built up another successful business, earning loads of money, but it just didn't quite feel right. And again, there was a lot of stuff that in in between the two phases where I maybe hadn't shown up as the best version of myself. And it just didn't feel good and authentic. And it was like, there was a t- I had to really... There was a dissonance. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I had to... Because when you've lived a certain way for 28 years of your life, and this is what I talk about again a lot, you don't just lose that version of yourself overnight. It's not possible. So over those next four years, I was trying to really figure out what, what am I? Who am I? What do I want to be? And it's only once I left that and then signed up with a mentor of mine to really guide me through it that I was really like, Wow. 
and then, then a lot of the stuff that I was then reading, it all kind of made sense. And I'd missed a massive piece of the puzzle. And the biggest piece of the puzzle is I hadn't got rid of the stuff that was holding me back because I kept making the same mistakes in my life over and over again. And the universe kept sending me the exact same things, just wrapped up differently, wrapped up differently. So it sent me the same kind of woman, just looking differently. It was sending me the same kind of business issues, just wrapped up differently. And it all came down to me. And once I realized that, I was like, I was the issue. I was the common denominator. And I really realized where this was, stuff was coming from. That's where I could do something about it. And you think like people pleasing and not being congruent to what you wanted was the biggest part of that? Just, I've just been really inauthentic. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because I didn't yeah. know what being authentic is. And this the thing, when you don't know yourself, how can you show up as yourself? And that was the issue. It's like when you, you, me and you spoke about this before, more times, I think when I first met you, I think I'm saying it because it was me going through at the time. When people go through the self-development journey, they think they've got it all figured out by reading a couple of books and going to a few workshops and seminars. And that was me. But the more that you know, the more that you don't know. But there's a real thing when it comes to the self-development world that when you really get hit with some real key bits of information, you think you know it. And it took me to hit that second rock bottom in my life to realize that you never really get it. Yeah. And that I had to let go I had to let go of that old version and really step into this new version of me, which was quite scary because I didn't know who I was. So it's nearly more painful the second time oh around my because God, then because you just you're more aware. It's it's a full loop Mate. forever more. Yeah. And, and I said this the second time I hit rock bottom was the worst I felt from when I was actually depressed. Yeah. The difference was this time I felt it more because I was more aware of what was going on. Yeah. And I had all the tools and stuff, and yeah, I still couldn't stop it. And it's like and again, I think it's um Jim Carrey talks about it when it comes to depression and stuff. He talks about that depression is essentially like the old version of you dying, dying off. And basically saying like something that your avatar is saying something's not right here. And that's basically essentially what I felt like what I was going through. And it was very painful and it was longer the second time round. So when I was depressed the first time, it was a lot more intense and it only maybe lasted for three months. The second time round, it was nearly a year long process and there was so much grief attached to it. And the entire time I was aware of what was going on. But the entire time I was aware of what was going on, I was able to figure it out along the way. And I was learning more about myself the more I was in it. Does that make sense? Whereas before, I just needed to get out of it. I was desperate. I was desperate to get out of this hole. Whereas the second time, while I was climbing up, I was assessing, oh, so this is the part of the hole that kind of fell down. I was just looking at the hole. I was looking at the hole and I could see the hole. I was still like, how far up have I got to climb? But this time around, although it was painful, I was a lot more aware of what was going on and realized how, how this had happened. Whereas before I didn't, and once I realized how it happened, I now won't allow myself to go back there again because I've learned to speak my truth. I've learned to actually communicate, set boundaries, and just be really honest with myself because the biggest issue was I was lying to myself. And that's, that's the hardest thing for me to accept was I was lying to myself and not being, again, congruent with the person I know I am. So to answer long answer your question, so now where am I going now? So that was the middle part. So now I'm at now. And now I know where I'm going in 10 years' time. I know exactly where I'm going to be in 10 years' time, and I know the kind of person I need to evolve into being, which is why, and I know I'm keeping track, I know you're going to be about to talk, but I've got on a flow, is that I'm now not wearing the hoodies. So for the people that watch this podcast for a while, I used to wear the branded hoodies all the time. I used to wear walk around in tracksuit bottoms all the time. I needed to realize that that's, that's not me. Like the person I want to be does not dress like that. The person that I'm going to be, and again, there's loads of people out there that are model. So I look at these successful people that are doing what I want to do, and I'm looking at them. What are their habits? Because you need to mirror their habits. You need to borrow their belief systems. You need to borrow their habits. You need to look at them like, wow, that's how you do it. So I then needed to reconstruct myself literally from the inside out. So when I get my hair cut every two weeks, get my beard done every two weeks, I bought a different aftershave. I've changed my wardrobe. I literally have become a different person. And with that then becomes a different belief system. A belief system about me being able to achieve what it is that I can achieve. Whereas before I didn't have the belief system to get the thing that I wanted. Does that make sense? Because I didn't believe, the beliefs weren't there, the habits weren't there, the self-image wasn't there. So, so going forward then, it's the, the image that you feel needs to, to be addressed and that builds... But the image is matching my, what's going on Yeah, inside. then that builds the character that that so, 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 plays. So, so, no, so it's the other way around. Okay. So, so I built the character based on the person I am now. Yes. Does that make sense? So it's yeah. in my head, it's like I made a decision. Okay, what kind of person do I want to be? What are my values? Mm-hmm. What do I want to, 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 to who do I want to show up as? And have there been any recent discoveries or recent new values or ethics moulded into this new self that you're going forward into? Not really, I can think of off the top of my head. No, okay. um, it's just a, a, a realisation that I do still need some me time. Yeah. And that's why, again, I've, I've really started to, to, to really throw myself into the reading and the studying because it's something I really value. I really value pondering on stuff and figuring stuff out and getting to the essence of it because I've never really done that before. 
So I was talking to a kid at a pupil referral unit the other day, and he was talking about how he struggles because he hates reading, but he doesn't hate reading, he hates reading the stuff that he's told to read. So I basically turned around to him and said, when you find stuff that you enjoy, don't just read it, sit with what you're thinking about while you're reading it. Yeah. So then you're training yourself to think. And then he came back to me, I saw him yesterday, and he said that he'd, like, he'd literally been practicing it. Ah, and it was, it was really, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's mate, a beautiful it, it really thing cool, to yeah. quit song. Right? Um, because it's teaching him to think. Yeah. And I'm like, when you're dyslexic, you struggle to read and write. So it's like, okay, well, what else have you got then? Your thoughts and your words. So to learn to communicate properly. And the way that you communicate properly is by controlling your thinking mm-hmm. because your words follow your thoughts. Mm-hmm. So when you start to clear up your thinking process, the words that you speak will be different. Mm-hmm. And this kid's quite clued up, actually. He, he kind of got it because sometimes I kind of go off and he was like, mate, this is insane. I was like, okay. Have cool. you <laughs> ever watched, is it The Dark Knight, the the Batman? Yeah, oh, great movie. The, is that the one Bane in it? Uh, is that, no, it's a Dark Knight Rises, I think. Dark Knight yeah. Rises. You give me a lovely image. You know where he's got to climb out of that mm. huge pit? Like, it feels like the first time you did it, you did know what you were doing and you managed, but you, you watched kind of someone. You, you watched that person, didn't yeah, you? You watched someone do it all. I've got this feeling of, what well, they kept falling. There's yeah. only one other one that it was Bane, Bane that managed yeah, yeah, but, but to do he'd it watch, He'd watched the people, hadn't they? So yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and worked out a way through that. But I felt like you first time you just managed to scrape through, then the second time through, you were like, okay, I've done it before, but... I've seen there's a better method to this yep. and you've added in a new route. Mm-hmm. It, not to say it can't happen again, fall in and then going through, but you've planned, you know that route now. And I'd be you, stupid, if you, you hit a good point there, I'd be stupid to think it wouldn't happen again. Yeah, yeah. Because it 100% will yeah. happen again, 100 it will. Yeah. The difference is... You really know that route now. I know the route and I've become a lot more familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. And... Would you I, say the first time was not a fluke, but... You just grabbed at what you oh, could mate. and got out of it, but I, then didn't really process it necessarily. I, I still, and it's really interesting to say this, I've never really actually gone back and really sat with being that low that first time because I, I always wonder like, first, I had, how to get out of it. I'm still not sure. And I, again, I told you, I spoke to someone, that, that was the thing that really helped me actually speaking about it. But I look and I think the environment that I was in, the flat that I was living in, Everything about my environment and my life, it could have gone a very different way. Like I never got to the point where I was actively planning on doing anything, mm-hmm. but thoughts had popped into my head. Mm-hmm. And I just look, I, I still do not know how I managed to get myself out. I don't know what the thought was because I kept thinking every night, the one thing I can remember is that every single night before I went to bed, I kept telling myself, this will get better. This will pass. I'll just snap out of it. That's what I kept telling myself. I'll snap out of it. Mm-hmm. I'll be happy again. Yeah. And I, just can't, I can't describe it any other way I, I, I can literally I can literally now put myself back in I can I can see it I can smell the bedroom because there's one candle I used to have, to have it was a stony cove it's a great candle thing from Asda I've got the smell I can I, yeah but 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 I, I can I can literally remember this one time specifically and I was crying I was begging like this will get better yeah but I still now even when I look back I can't put a defining moment on because sometimes you hear people's like stories don't you on podcasts and like oh yeah they did this and did that it's like the only thing I can realise was that I was isolated and needed to get a job. How I then went from the pit to out of it, apart from just talking, I, I can't say. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, interesting. And mate, I, so you think, yeah, you could fall back into it, but do you have a, a parachute this time? Do you have something uh, like a rope that you've attached yourself to and you're like, I'm just going to make this easier, this climb? Yeah, I, I, don't, like I, said, I, I don't think I'll I don't think I ever get to the, the okay. bottom of that pit again. I don't think it's possible. With the knowledge I've got now, I don't think it's possible. Unless something drastic happens. Touch wood, it doesn't. But unless something drastic happens, yeah. then yeah. Do you know what I mean, if something really tragic happens, 100%, I think it's very easy to fall back there. And I'd be naive to think that it wouldn't. Do you really summarise that be part of yourself then that won't allow that to be the case the the things that you've added to become that's going to prevent you from getting that low again self-awareness it is it's self-awareness, self-awareness. Because, communication because self-awareness and understanding of my thoughts yeah. so essentially the, what, what normally gets people into that dark head space is their thoughts yeah. and people walk around in a bad neighborhood all the time in their mind their, their mind their thoughts is a bad neighborhood and they spend most of the time in this bad neighborhood. If you spend time in a bad neighborhood, at some point, bad thing is gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing for me, I've cleared out of the bad neighborhood. 
Now, there's still some people in there, I'm sure, that are going to pop over now and again. They, they do. Like, there's some bad residents, but it's nowhere near like it was before. So for me to then fall back to those pits, something bad has got to happen for that neighborhood of, in my mind to go back to that dark place. It's just not going to happen. I have bad fleeting things. Like I said, there's a few residents in there, but it's, it's a good neighborhood now. I've cleared out all the crap. However, if like a nuclear bomb hits, like I said, cause something tragic could happen in my life. I'm not, again, I'm not stupid. That's a different story. But right now where it's at, it's just not going to happen because I'm aware of what's going on. I'm aware of my thoughts. I notice my patterns when I'm starting to be a bit more negative with myself, when I'm not being kind to myself, when I'm starting to run myself into the ground, when I'm not looking after my needs, when I'm not having any needs met. All of these things I'm aware and then I can communicate it either with Katie or with myself and then it gets sorted. Does that make sense? Whereas for most people, they don't have that awareness, that really pleasant neighborhood that they're living in can slowly become a dark, dark place. Because it's like that old saying, stick a frog in boiling water, it'll jump straight out. Stick in cold water and slow turn up the heat, it'll boil alive. So you have to become aware when that temperature is slowly being turned up, turned up and things don't feel right, when things aren't quite off. And a lot of the time we kind of know it, but we just dismiss it. Oh, it's okay, that's not a thing, fine. And we just suppress it. We just press that emotion down. We don't listen to our emotions. We just play it off on, it's fine. No, no, sit with it. Your emotions are signposts. Your emotions are trying to tell you something's not quite right. So if you're constantly, you're normally happy and bubbly, and you, you sometimes you're now feeling a bit low, don't you feel like I'm having one of those days? Because we, yes, we do all have some of those days, but if that one day now becomes two, and it's happening every other week now, then okay, something's not quite right here. And that's when you can start to ask yourself the right questions. Yeah, so your takeaway within this podcast really is that self-awareness. Like uh, you've had a month now, we're, we're into the, the year. It's being honest with yourself, checking in, and growing that self-awareness of what do you want out of this? And if things haven't gone right, yeah. ask yourself well, what's happened. Yeah. What responsibility can I take for this? Rather than thinking, what have I done wrong? Ask yourself, where's my thinking been off? Well, what about those that uh, it's gone right, but they're not used to it going right, so they're kind of prepping for a nuclear bomb to hit or something? I think you need to prep for a nuclear bomb. I think yeah. it's silly not to. However, I think if things are going really good, ask yourself, why are they going well? Yeah. So just so when things just don't go right. It's a good time to have a check yeah, in regardless. When things don't go right, say reflect. For bad. When things are going well, reflect. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What things are you doing right now that are really working for you? Yeah. Is it that you've got a set bedtime? Is it that you aren't eating junk food? Is it that you did dry January and somehow you're trying to be like, oh no, it wasn't dry January. Well, if the one thing you've changed is not drinking alcohol for January and your life's substantially improved, I would hypothesize it's probably got a lot to do with you not drinking alcohol. Just throwing it out there. So just asking yourself, if things have gone, been going really, really well, why? What's changed? And again, for you, you're saying that with Chrissy, you and Chrissy are communicating more. Okay, so when things aren't going right, you can then be like, checklist. Oh, wait, I'm not doing that first fundamental thing. Not communicate with Chrissy. Yeah. Does that make sense? So you've got this checklist. So these things, when, when things are going well, you're doing these five things. And if things aren't going well, you can check the checklist. Oh, me, Chrissy, we are communicating. Oh, oh, I'm not, oh, I'm not doing my morning walks. Ah, right, okay. Well, of course, that's why I'm not feeling great. So do you mean you've got this checklist of, well, when I do these things, I feel better. Yeah. I think that's the one for me, like celebrate your wins, but don't celebrate too heavy and look at the poor, but don't berate yourself too much. Because for me, uh, two th I had uh, no alcohol this month and no sugar. And when I had norovirus, literally the only thing I could eat because I'd been thrown up so much and I had the taste of not nice stuff was ice cream. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm going to break it. But I'd not had alcohol at all this month. So... Even I had sugar and I think my mind went to beating myself up more because I'd had the sugar, but it didn't celebrate the fact that I'd not had alcohol. Yeah. Whereas I could have gone, okay, I had to have the sugar because I was so ill and it was the only thing I wanted to, if I was going to throw up, yeah. <laughs> it was the only thing I wanted to taste. Um, but yeah, uh, it was recognizing, okay, that's interesting. The, the part of my brain that wants to beat itself up more than celebrate itself is louder and I need to tune into that and know that self. Exactly. Yeah. And that's it. Don't tune it down. This awesome, man. Um, right. Where can people find out more information about you, Mikey? I am Rhythmical Mike, and that is at the old farm bus as well. And then don't forget to give us a follow on Instagram, The Prom Life Project. If you've taken any value from today's episode, don't forget to like and share with a friend. Until next time, take it easy. <laughs>